Nate Whiting of 492 in Charleston. Thanks so much for joining us here at the Beard House. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so your restaurant is opening in the summer, in the fall. Tell us a little bit about what 492 will be. Um, we hope to be opening in the fall, uh, refurbishing, old building, things mm -hmm. like that. And what type of food will be served? You, you were um, previously at Tristan, will it be similar to that? Or it'll be it somewhat be? similar, um, a lot of the same philosophies, uh, mm -hmm. same kind of style, like progressive American, contemporary American, using what's around us, and then we'll be focusing on uh, more of a fluid kind of menu so we can like really kind of just let the farmers and the fishermen and purveyors and things like that just dictate what we're cooking and try to you focus on what's around us. We want that fine dining type of you know quality and the ingredients mm -hmm. and the cooking but without the pretentiousness without you know a lot of the fluff and things like that that go with other fine dining restaurants we want it to be more casual mm -hmm. but still like have that excellent quality. And how do you think that fits into the Charleston dining scene? Because obviously the dining scene in Charleston has exploded in recent years. There's a lot of fine dining, there's a lot of casual. You know, are you hoping to straddle the middle of that? Especially? Yeah, we're trying to find trying to find that middle ground where mm -hmm. you can still go out and get that excellent cooking that, you know, you know, with really good perspective and good techniques. Mm -hmm. And but also you can come as you are, you know, feel free to right. come in and like we're trying to get the menu to where it's a little more modular so you can come in and have two or three plates and stay for a full on like you know leave it to us kind of thing where we'll just kind of cook for you and let us know how many courses you want or you can just come in for a little couple plates and go on to the next place so trying to fit a lot of needs with one one menu you know I mean? <laughs> and let's talk about <laughs> your background because okay. you grew up in new york but your experience has been very much South Carolina driven. Yeah, definitely. What drew you to South Carolina from New York? I went to Johnson and Wales while mm -hmm. I was still there in Charleston and we just love it there. We love all the ingredients, like a lot of those ingredients that I didn't grow up with and are kind of a little foreign to me and I've just grown to love them and appreciate all their nuances and they're just, it's just such a bounty of awesome products there. You know, as a chef coming in as an outsider, not growing up with Southern food, does that help you sort of approach the produce there from a different angle and yeah, all the products? Yeah, I, I think that's kind of what separates me from a lot of the people who are born and bred in the South. And mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, I'm not necessarily tied to the way grandma did it is the only right. way to do it. <laughs> I can kind of step back and look at it from another perspective and be like, well, what about this and what about that? You know, I'm a little more willing to take risks and you know, think of, you know, different maybe flavor profiles or things like that that wouldn't necessarily come traditionally or naturally to some people. Um, not that they're wrong, it's just a little right. different. Not know? gonna say it's bad, no, no, but... No, no, there's nothing wrong with it, absolutely, it's delicious. You can't find any of grandmother's recipes no, anyway. No. <laughs> and what are some of the ways that you've incorporated ingredients, both at Tristan and sort of that you see yourself using at 492? Buttermilk, pecans, um, dairy, um, local hog, um, especially the asabas. But I'm really, I've always been drawn more to the vegetables too because I think that's what really makes specific cuisine so unique. Um, being able to like use those vegetables that are closest to you um, because they don't travel well and they're still alive and they're living and they require so much more than the application of heat. Um, you gotta, they take a lot of care and a lot of, um, you know, attention. Um, a lot of vegetables are afterthoughts at a lot of places and we try to really focus on that and you know you can kind of like asparagus in Charleston is only going to be you know excellent right then right the farther it goes away from the source the less the quality and I mean it doesn't matter who's cooking it you're only as good as your ingredients. Tomatoes are incredible. Peaches um, like a lot of people think Georgia is the peach state, but South Carolina produces more peaches mm -hmm. than Georgia does, and the quality is just fantastic. You know, uh, just just being able to cook more in the moment and just trying to have that fluid approach, so you know we can interpret the ingredients when they're ready, and we can just trust the farmers and the purveyors. Like I just kind of always felt like the middleman between you know the <laughs> guests and the farmer. Like I just want you know I trust them to tell me, look, this is awesome right now you need this right now and because you know if I'm out there at the farms and the docks and everything all the time I feel like I'm not there paying attention to the food that they've worked so hard to gather or grow and, you know I want to make sure that you know interpreting the way and 
paying respect and homage to all their hard work and then, you know, sharing with our guests like the way we like to think about food. Why do you think Charleston specifically has become this sort of epicenter of Southern cooking? You know, I really, I really don't think I could pinpoint that, but uh, I think it's always been a travel destination, and it's like it's a great area, the coastal area. There's so much great seafood, and then a lot of things grow very well there. I don't know. It's just, just a lot of little things. It's just become kind of like this perfect little hive of awesome. You know, it's like a little bit of here, a little bit from that, and then it's kind of becoming a melting pot, a lot of like New York is, where it's getting more diverse and more culturally diverse, and you know, people are willing to look away from the old, not turn their back on tradition, but you know, more embracing progress and you know, looking forward without turning their back on traditions, and that's kind of the way I like to cook too. And, well, yeah. thank you so much yeah. for sharing a piece of Charleston here at the James Beard House. Really appreciate Excellent. it. Thanks for having me.